Hello everybody, I am Nico D, so today I'm back and we're gonna take a look to Panfrost on Armbian Focal. So first to download it, we go to the Armbian websites and we go to downloads. There we search for our board. So I am going to be using the NanoPy M4 for this. It does have some faults, but we can make it work. Other boards may not have these faults. So what we need is an Armbian Focal with Mainline Kernel. So here Mainline 5.4 Kernel, that's the one we need. So downloads. Let me speed that up a bit because it's too slow. One thing I have to tell you, this image will be great for gaming, but there is still no video acceleration available for it. So for that the legacy images are still your best choice. I am going to do everything in Linux here, so while I'm downloading the file, I am gonna install the GNOME Disk Utility. I had forgotten the name, but I had to think a while before it snapped into my brain. So GNOME Disk Utility. And to run it, it's GNOME Disks. I didn't work with Linux computers for a while, so please excuse me. GNOME Disks is a replacement for Win32 Disk Imager, or for Bolero Etcher, but then for Linux of course. So when that is done we can again wait for the slow internet to download the file. So this is one of the problems, the onboard Wi-Fi doesn't work in the mainline kernel images, so you will have to use a Wi-Fi USB dongle for this. I did try some tricks that used to work, but they don't seem to work anymore, so I don't know what the problem is. So the next thing we will have to do is to unpack the file, so it's an xz file. So for that we have to type in this, with the correct file name of course, of your file. Or in Windows you just use 7-zip. This is again going to take some time on my M4 because it's only using two cores for this. Great, now we've got the image, all we have to do is burn it onto an SD card or an EMMC. So I'm using GNOME Disks, you can use Etcher, you can use Win32 Disk Imager, whatever you like. I'm just used to using this. For people who want to use GNOME Disks, don't use a web browser while you're using it or don't do anything else, because that can make your computer hang, but otherwise it works perfectly. So that's it, just let it rip onto your media, then put it into your SBC or TV box or whatever you want to use. So this works for a lot of SBCs and a lot of socks, only not for the newer AM logics, like the Oldroid N2, that needs a lot more work. Now to boot the image there is an issue, so it can't boot with the HDMI plugged in. So you have to leave the HDMI cable out and then when you see the light flashing then you can plug it in and then everything works normal. It is a bug that is known and it should be fixed with the next updates of the downloads. This might not be with all RK3399 boards. So to log in it's of course root and the password is 1234. And again the password 1234 and then you choose two times your own password. And then fill in all the rest. So that's it, now we come into the Armbian Focal desktop. Of course the first thing I do is connect my Wi-Fi, and then I will do a sudo apt update and sudo apt upgrade of course. I am always using the XFCE4 goodies with my XFCE4 desktop and also the Mate system manager. So I will install these now.
So while it is installing I can open my web browser and go to the Armbian websites, then to the forum and there to research and reviews. And here you will find build Panfrost with Armbian. So we go to this message by Misko or Mosko or I don't know what it is. Mosko. It is from him. So uh, we just need to add a PPA to our uh, PPA lists. And that is all. And then update and upgrade. And then the Panfrost driver is installed. That's all we need to do. So we're gonna do that. So the first command is not necessary because that's already installed in Armbian. If you use another distro, it might be necessary. The second one, of course, is the most important one. This adds the PPA with all the GPU drivers. So all that needs to be done now is again sudo apt update and sudo apt upgrade. So while that's busy I'm arranging my panels the way I want them. So I add a panel and second panel and the length is 100% and 40 for uh, the row height. I lock the panel and I remove the third panel that was unnecessary. So back to the second panel. I've just installed all the tools for it so I add two launchers. I add one separator. I add two CPU co CPU frequency monitors, I add a CPU graph, a generic monitor, a keyboard layout, places, screenshots, and of course system load monitor and the windows buttons. And then I start arranging everything the way I like it. That's how I like my Linux to look. You don't have to do it the same way, but uh, you could take some hints from it. I always want to see my temperature, I always want to see my clock speeds of my CPU, so for me it's very handy to have that on my taskbar. And I also use different keyboards from Belgium and from the UK, so I want to be able to switch that easily. That's why I've got that on my taskbar. So the first launcher I use for the Mate system monitor, the second launcher I use for a terminal. That's not where I need to be. Here at terminal, terminal emulator. Okay, so now I've got the terminal over here and the Mate system monitor. I like the Mate system monitor a lot more than any other system monitor and the terminal. So that's good. Now I change my keyboard to UK because I'm using a UK keyboard. And that's about it. Okay, UK. And also the second CPU frequency monitor I've uh, set the fifth core uh, for the second one. So the first one is uh, the big course and the s of, or the first one is a small course and the second one is the big course. And I still have to do my generic uh, my temperature sensor. I see I haven't done that. And to finish it off, of course, my background. Now restart the SBC, so sudo reboot. So for the M4 ones, 
Uh, you will have to pull out the HDMI cable again to make it boot. So now we are booted, we can show that Panfrost is alive. So for that we are gonna install two tools. So Mesat Utils and GLMark2. So with Mesa Utils you can do glinfo-b and then you can see that Panfrost is enabled. So now for the final test, I'll install Super Tux cards and I will show you the performance in 1080p. I must say it is great to have Focal, a new LTS to replace Bionic, but still a lot of things do not work like they should be. A lot of the games in the repos just don't work like Nexus, my favorite game, and many others don't work from the repos, so you will have to compile the games yourself. In the next video I will show you how to add some games, but for now I'm gonna leave it with this. The video is already long enough, so thank you all for watching, it's great to be back, see you all later, bye!